Okay, I hope uh, everyone is seeing my screen. So if not, please give me a, a big shout. So let's start the presentation. Sorry? Okay, um, first of all, I will... Uh, first of all, I want to thank the entire team uh, who's been uh, involved in Integration Monday. I think we've, we've had around eight or nine months uh, running now, so it's quite amazing what the, what the team is doing. So uh, thank you for organizing and thanks, thank you for having me. So um, my name is uh, Glenn Kolpat. I'm a first-year integration MVP and I work as an uh, integration consultant at uh, Codit, who is uh, a Belgian company. Um, I'm also part of the, the Belgian BizTalk user group, so uh, I want to take this opportunity to reach out to, to any speaker who is um, willing to speak in Belgium. Just uh, shoot me an email and we'll, um, we'll see what we can do. So today I'm going to talk about um, hybrid uh, integration with, um, with SAP. Um, SAP is a, a German software company uh, that was founded in, in 1972 by ex-IBM employees and is one of the largest um, uh, software and data application vendors in the world. Um, they have a, a big uh, on-premise um, ERP tradition, but um, recently they're, they're um, shifting their focus more and more to, to the cloud. They have a whole range of software as a service applications like uh, SuccessFactors, that's uh, an, an HR focused uh, application. And they also have their uh, SAP HANA cloud platform that's also available through the, to the Windows Azure portal. So and that's uh, actually an in-memory platform as a service um, uh, cloud environment. Um, that has been developed by the SAP team. So I'm going to quickly show you what I will use uh, during this presentation. So I have a, a virtual machine. I hope this is very um, clear and I have a, a SAP instance running here. So if I log in, you immediately, immediately see the, um, the interface of SAP. For the people who are not familiar with it, there's a um, there's the log on. This is the logon screen where you log on. I will quickly uh, log in. So let's hope I get the password right. So and this is actually the main screen of, of the SAP environment. So here on the top you have the the navigation buttons and the search buttons to to navigate around your screen or to to search for certain functions or or, or web. Here on the on the left side, you have the the SAP menu, and uh, this is actually um, a link to all of the available um, uh, sub application inside SAP. For example, um, to monitor your uh, connections and so on. Here on top, there's a little box, and um, that I will be using um, most of the time during the presentation. And this is actually to um, here you can enter your transaction, and this is actually a, a short a shortcut to uh, to a transaction you fill in. So just to show you, I will now navigate to transaction SM59, which is basically just um, um, the the list of the the RFC connection. Here you also see that there's a, an RFC connection um, to my BizTalk available. So this was quickly to show you um, around the SAP interface. So and to start integrating with, um, with BizTalk or with any other, um, other application uh, or from the cloud, you need to um, prepare your SAP environment to to open up um, its connections and to, to start preparing the necessary things. So first of all, you need to create a user. This user, it will be, um, will be, will authenticate to the SAP system 
and will have um, certain roles and profiles on this on the on the system. For example, it can have an administrator role or a read-only role on certain on modules or, or certain functions. So that's um, for the user part. So and the second thing is that you need to create the RFC destination. Um, this is actually where you specify the, um, the program ID, um, the connection type being Unicode, non-Unicode, and where you can execute certain connection tests. Um, maybe it would be a good idea if I demonstrate to you this. So, so here you have the, the RFC destination created for this talk. And one of the most important things is here the program ID. When integrating with BizTalk on-premise, you need to specify this program ID inside your URIs and, and your uh, receive ports or send locations. Next to that, another important thing is the Unicode. Um, to integrate with BizTalk, the system always needs to be in Unicode, so that's also important. So next to the ROC, um, you have to create a, a transactional port, um, and that's basically a, a logical container for your RFC destination. And at the end, you need to create um, a partner profile, which basically links it all together. So uh, next to the, to the different types, you see certain codes like the SU1 or the SM59. Those are the SAP transaction codes. Then those codes you fill in in the transaction box uh, at top of your um, SAP environment to directly navigate to the um, function. So in the first part of this talk, I'm going to show you how we've done integration um, on a traditional way, so using uh, only BizTalk server on-premise and an on-premise um, SAP system. Of course, um, to integrate with SAP, you need to prepare your uh, BizTalk environment by installing certain, um, certain SDKs or, or preparing uh, certain, um, certain configurations. So, first of all, you need to install the uh, Line of Business Adapter SDK and the BizTalk adapter pack. So uh, both of them come with, um, with the BizTalk installation. So it's very easy and simple to, do, to install those. It's a, a pretty simple next, next finish um, wizard. There's a, a little star next to the adapter pack. Um, this is just to, to emphasize that um, you also need to execute this step when doing a uh, hybrid uh, connectivity, for example, using Logic Apps or, or BizTalk services. Another important thing is to um, install the, the SAP RFC client assemblies. There's also a little star next to it, which basically means you also have to use the, uh, install the client assemblies when doing uh, hybrid connections. So, and those um, client assemblies can be downloaded uh, from the SAP marketplace. Uh, important thing to mention here is to always download the, um, the latest um, client assemblies uh, from your customer, so do not use previously downloaded ones, just to um, make sure you have the latest version. Um, Another important thing to mention uh, about these RFC client libraries is that um, SAP recently announced that these um, RFC libraries we're currently using at all our BizTalk projects and um, communications with SAP are going to um, be deprecated uh, uh, somewhere in March 2016. So from then on, we have to use the new um, SAP NW or SAP NCO um, client assemblies, which are also available for the marketplace. Um, an another important thing to mention here is that currently the, um, the BizTalk uh, adapter 
does not support these new libraries. So, um, but a little bird told me that the team is working hard on it to get those um, those support for those new libraries uh, up and running uh, very soon. Um, the next thing is you have to deploy the SAP property schema onto your um, BizTalk environment. This is only necessary for an on-premise integration um, um, setup. Um, why do you need to do this? The SAP adapter when receiving files, it promotes certain properties to the context. And you know, if you try to promote a, a value to a, a property that's not um, of the schema that's not deployed, you will get, of course, errors. And then the, the last one is you need to configure certain environment variables. And those uh, environment variables um, is just um, a file that is being used by the RSC client uh, assemblies. And I think Mitch wrote um, a good blog post about it. Um, so I will, um, I will maybe share that on Twitter uh, after my uh, presentation. So a bit on the architecture, um, the SAP adapter exposes the SAP system as a, a WCF service to, to client applications. Those client applications uh, exchange SOAP messages with the SAP adapter through uh, the WCF channels. Um, uh, you can see that these client applications can be uh, ranging from a WCF application to BizTalk or an, or an SSIS uh, application. So, and the SAP adapter itself, behind the scenes, uses the SAP RFC library um, to connect to, uh, to the SAP uh, server. So, now that we've uh, done the, the configuration and we've seen what we could, um, we see what we had to do to, to install our, our, our both environments, um, what can we do now? We can start exchanging IDOCs and uh, BAPIs. So uh, IDOCs is actually um, a representation of a, of a business document, of a, of an, um, of a, a function. And then um, a BAPI is uh, a business application uh, interface. So an RFC is the protocol used to call the, those functions. So in other words, uh, a BAPI is basically a, a function module that can be called uh, over the um, RFC protocol. So I will um, show you a demo now uh, on how um, we get IDOCs from the SAP system. So we have our SAP system, we have a BizTalk server, and we have a SQL database. I will log on to my SAP system and then um, push an IDOC towards BizTalk server and just a simple demo, BizTalk will put that uh, IDOC into the SQL database. So, um, I will open up my virtual machine. So this is my um, SAP environment. I will quickly delete those records from the result table. Otherwise, you will probably not believe me that this works. So if I execute now, there's uh, zero results in the database. So what? What I've created, is basically a, a simple uh, WCF SAP receive location with the necessary uh, configuration. So here you can see my um, my SAP application host. It's uh, running on my local host. My client, the language of my system, I will quickly scroll down. So again, my gateway host, local host, gateway service. And then you see here the, the famous program ID that is, that is necessary um, from, the, from the SAP. So if we go, so 
let me first show you how we can do a connection test. So we go to transaction SM59. So if I open up the BizTalk connection and I, sh and I click here on connection test, this connection test should succeed. So this already went quite good. So now I will try to push out an, uh, an IDOC towards my uh, SQL server. So we go to transaction WE19. This is the, um, the transaction for the, for the IDOC processing tool. So if we open this up, I will select an existing IDOC. I have did this demo today just to test if it works. So I will select an existing IDOC. And then I will, um, so I will just modify it. So I will, um, so here you see I've um, put Saravana as a customer name. Uh, I've modified the streets, the zip code, and the city. So if I press OK now and choose for standard outbound processing, this will send a test IDOC to my BizTalk server. So below you can see IDOC has been saved in the database, which basically means the IDOC has been processed towards the external application. If we do a select now, it fails which is not good. So let's see what's happened. I will just disable and enable my receive location again. Maybe restart the host instance and see if I can My MSDTC is giving issues, so let me just try again. So I choose the standard outbound processing. It has been saved to the database, and normally now I should see an IDOC uh, coming in. So the first IDOC, um, you see it, it also has been processed, but normally it will come uh, later. Um, SAP has an internal retry mechanism, so if I if I don't forget, I will come back later to the SQL and just um, refresh it, and then hopefully the second um, IDOC should be uh, in there as uh, as reprocessed. So now that we've seen um, um, the on-premise part. Of of, of integrating with SAP, it's it's time to move uh, to onto the cloud. So the cloud recently has introduced a whole new range of things we need to take an account uh, when designing for integration. There's the the massive scale, the the show, social network, the big data. We have to access uh, our SAP from everywhere. So it forced us to start um, thinking globally. And this is really where the power of, of Azure comes into play with its huge infrastructure and, it, and its whole range of, of, of services it provides. So it really helped us a lot as integration uh, people to, to think outside of our, um, our data centers. To do... Um, integration. Um, Azure offers a whole range of, um, of services to connect on-premise uh, with the cloud. So we have um, Azure networking uh, with virtual networking and express route. We have um, Azure service bus with their, the queues, the relay and the topics. I will talk later during this talk about service bus relay. So and of course we have the Azure BizTalk server. Um, for more details on and um, for more details and a better and more detailed overview of all these services and what's possible with it, I suggest you to watch the the session of Michael um, 
and that session is a hybrid connect connectivity options if I'm not mistaken. So it gives you a great overview of all the options to connect um, on-premise with the cloud. So next to the previous service I, I've, I've talked about, since a couple of months we've got uh, a new set of possibilities to connect to the cloud with on-premise. So and therefore we have the new um, Azure App Services uh, with the web apps, the mobile apps, the logic apps, and the API apps. So the more important, two more important things for us as integration persons, I think, would be the uh, the logic apps and the API apps. Um, during the rest of this talk, I will focus on some of these options. I will talk about. Um, Azure Service Bus, um, Logic Apps, and uh, API Apps. And I will do this, um, I will support the rest of this talk with demo called um, SAP Airlines. So um, that demo exists of a, of a website that can be uh, hosted everywhere we want. So um, this website is currently hosted on my laptop. So I run it directly from Visual Studio. And I have an, an on-premise data center uh, with an SAP and a BizTalk, uh, um, BizTalk server 2013 R2. So um, my on-premise data center are two virtual machines, one with SAP and one with um, the uh, BizTalk server on it installed. And I will link these together using Windows Azure with, um, with the services you see here. Um, Service Bus Relay, uh, Logic Apps, and uh, API Apps. So let me show you how the demo works. So I will open up uh, Visual Studio and fire up the, the connection. So as you can see, I hope this is somewhat clear. I will zoom a bit in. So you have a welcome screen where you can select your uh, one of the airlines. So I will, to make it easy, I will select American Airlines. And once I click search, um, the search button will set a request over Logic Apps to my on-premise SAP system and send me back a list of uh, flights that are available for American Airlines. So if we go to the Azure portal, so this is the Azure portal, and I go to my Logic app, you can see the, the call coming in, and it fails. So the demo gods are not very gentle for me. So it worked, uh, I think, 50 minutes ago, you see. Um, I will quickly check what's going on. Uh, so, excuse me for the hiccup. Okay, it doesn't copy paste. Um, I just allow access. So, uh, so the host name is unknown. So, what I will do, I will try to fix it on the fly here. So, um, to connect. With SAP, there's a, uh, I've created a, an API app that uh, is, has all my connections. So, and normally, if you see, uh, if you create a logic, uh, an API app, you sh should see uh, a hybrid connection um, status popping up here. So, it's a bit slow. It says connected, but just to be sure, I will click it again and then reinstall it because that usually does the trick. So um, when you click hybrid connection, you see the hybrid connection settings popping up. So important thing is here, the primary um, configuration connection string, and here the download and configure. So I will copy the, the service bus relay uh, connection string, and I will choose download and configure. So. I will enter the relay and I will just hit install. So this takes a, a couple of minutes. So I think it takes two or three. 
let's hope it's uh, quicker this time. So, um, and once it's installed, I will retry it again. If it doesn't work, I still have a, a small backup plan to to get things going. So we're waiting for it to install. In the meantime, I can show you uh, how the how the Logic app is built. So it says it's installed, and I will just give it uh, one more minute. Um, and this is what my Logic apps look like. So it receives an HTTP request. It sets those requests to SAP. Then we have a Vistock transform service, and we have an HTTP listener that is sending back the reply. So if I fire up the website again, so you saw some good error handling over there. So if I fire up the website again, let's uh, maybe try Japan Airlines now, because he doesn't like United Airlines. So if I go back now and look for the BAPI flight list, let's hope we get a green um, monitoring state now. Um, no, I have to go to my logic app, excuse me. Ah, okay, the data already has come back, so you can see now um, the tracking has been uh, succeeded. So, uh, again, my apologies for the hiccup. So, you see um, logic apps is still in preview, so we have to live with those um, um, those hiccups uh, quite sometimes. So, uh, like I said, if we select an airline, you um, get a list of flights that um, that will fly for those airlines. Um, so, so let's and then once we have the list, we can check for availability and. So that's the button here. And what this button does is um, it will send a message over Service Bus Relay to my uh, SAP environment and will also execute uh, a BAPI call that will um, check how many seats there are still available uh, on that specific flight. So I will check availability. Okay. So I have quite some issues. Let's see if this still this hybrid is still running. <coughs> oh, I see there's problems with I'm now uh, logged into the old portal. I will do a refresh. I noticed a red exclamation mark at service bus, but no, everything should be up and running. So it's, let me check if the relay is working. So my relay is not registered. So if I do a refresh here, I will disable it and enable it. This is a BizTalk receive location. I was going to um, talk about it later. Okay, I will just quickly comment um, comment these lines of code out because uh, you, there appears to be an issue. So. So I will fire up the application again. Let's wait and then we will select an airline once again. This will go, as I said, to Logic Apps. Uh, give me a list back of the, um, of the flight items. I will check the availability. So this now normally goes over service bus relay to my SAP environment. But now this generates some um, some dummy data. Then we can book the flights. We can fill in some uh, some data.
we can book a seat if we want and then we can confirm booking and then we have booked with uh, SAP Airlines. Next to that there's a button that you can use to download the booking confirmation and this is uh, when I click the booking confirmation this will generate uh, a booking confirmation uh, in PDF and therefore I used uh, API apps uh, from the new Azure app platform so this is the, the PDF generated for uh, from the API app. So let's continue back to the slides. Uh, excuse me again for the hiccups but uh, the demo gods are not gentle tonight. So the first cloud service I'm going to talk about is uh, Service Bus Relay. Service Bus Relay is a, is a mechanism to, to enable cloud application to communicate with on on-premise uh, web services or applications. So in a traditional setup you would have to um, open up firewall security to allow the calls into the on-premise uh, system. You would also probably have to use uh, custom logic to connect um, from on-premise to the cloud. Using the, the service bus relay, which is essentially just an extraction layer, enables the communication um, between the calling client and the on-premise um, on premises uh, systems. Uh, what happens is um, that the on-premise service, uh, here BizTalk, registers itself with um, the service bus relay and then the relay and the, um, and the client um, agree on the channel and the protocol. This all happens behind the scenes with it's actually just WCF magic. You just register your client and they agree on protocol and everything else. When this happens, your, um, your service or your um, on-premise uh, application now listens for requests on the service bus uh, relay endpoint. So when a client or here the cloud application makes a call, he, um, he does a call directly to the service bus relay and then the service bus relay relays down the call to the actual service. Then the actual service does uh, his magic. For example here the BizTalk server would connect to SAP um, and when the reply comes back from SAP, BizTalk server relays it back to the service bus relay and relay, relays it back to the, to the client itself. So for the demo, I was going to show you the, the BizTalk receive location I have here but apparently there's an issue with the connection. So I will just quickly try this one more time. If, it's, uh, if it not works, I will just continue the, the talk. So let's, uh, let's wait until the host instances are restarted. So, So what we did, I uh, created uh, a basic HTTP relay endpoint and configured it with the, the relay um, address. As security, uh, it uses the, the old SDS connections um, to connect to the relay. So normally if I enable this, uh, then BizTalk would register itself as a client onto the relay and then the messages can come in uh, through the relay service onto my on-premise uh, application and then um, relay back up. So as you can see there's a, um, I am unable to uh, connect so there's an issue here I will not look uh, look into it further 
but uh, if you have um, a client registered, I can probably show you it here. This is the, the relay created by uh, the Logic app. So once you have uh, a client registered, you will uh, you will see it um, being uh, entered in this list of um, clients that have been res registered on the on the relay service. So let's continue. So um, I'm going to quickly talk about um, about Azure BizTalk services. So um, there has been uh, not much, or can I say, none further development on this since I guess last year. So it still has the two major parts being the B2B and the um, and the EAIs, and it it's, um, it used the the BizTalk adapter service um, to connect from uh, on the cloud to um, to the on-premise. And um, the adapter service uh, behind the scenes also uses the service bus relay. So um, uh, what about the future of the BizTalk services? So um, it's production ready and it's uh, it's available from the from the cloud platform. So if you want, you can still use it. So um, the existing features that are currently in BizTalk service uh, Azure BizTalk services are currently all available on the new Azure platform. So um, there's also uh, an easy migration available. For example, the, the mappings that you used in your Azure BizTalk services can be easily migrated to um, the mapping API app that it's uh, also fairly simple to use. And like I said, um, the current features from uh, BizTalk services are all available on the Azure app platform um, that is currently in preview. So um, I would suggest uh, to take a look at that first before uh, making any uh, production stuff with the, the BizTalk services. So I don't have a, a demo on the BizTalk services. Um, for the people who uh, saw my talk uh, on this in, in the Netherlands, uh, I had a BizTalk service demo there, and I replaced the, the BizTalk service demo part with uh, the Azure App Service uh, demo. So like I said, the the, late, the last and newest service I'm going to talk about is the new Azure App Services that is currently available through the, um, through the new, new Azure portal. Uh, as you can see, as you saw uh, a, uh, a few slides back, there are four major parts. Um, there's uh, the App Service itself that has everything you need to build um, apps that target web and mobile clients. Um, there's uh, the API apps. Um, from here you can connect to, to really dozens of popular services like uh, Office 365, uh, Twitter, um, uh, Salesforce. Um, um, and of course, you can create your own APIs. So, like uh, I created in the demo, I created an, uh, a PDF generator app. And finally, um, with Logic Apps, the, the last part of it, you can um, automate and design business processing uh, using a simple no code portal experience, which is not always uh, that user friendly, in my, uh, in my opinion. So uh, I'm going to to focus on the on the last two, um, as these are the services that we, as integration people, will come in contact the most. So there's the um, there's the uh, API apps, um, and API apps are um, are using the the same platform which which powers the the Azure Web apps. So it's actually built on top of, of 
proven technology and using existing technology that you're already um, familiar with. It's really um, develop, developer focused, so there's um, it's very easy to to create a, a, an API app in in Visual Studio and just uh, click publish and then it's already available in your um, in your Azure portal. So um, and there has there's also quite some powerful tooling around it. So there's the the Swagger and Waddle and also there's the the um, uh, API management uh, available from the from the Azure platform. So next to that, there's the the Logic Apps, and Logic Apps uh, allow developers to design uh, workflows that uh, start from a trigger and then execute uh, a number of uh, of steps. Um, and those steps itself are again uh, API apps. So um, and basically. When doing uh, when doing uh, when creating a logic app, you only have to take care of your business logic, um, like authentication, checkpointing, and durable executions are all handled uh, for you by the platform. So um, already showed you the, the Azure App Services quickly when I explained the demo. So I will go back to the, to the Azure portal. So this is the new portal. I will go to the new, new portal. So, um, and what I did uh, to expose my uh, SAP flight list, if you remember. So if I go back to home, so this, here does a call to the logic app. So, and if we click open the the logic app, we can see the the triggers and actions here. So, what I did, um, I've created a, a two-way HTTP listener. I created a SAP connector. A, and a BizTalk a transform service and linked it all together to to create a logic app that exposes uh, SAP functionality. I will go quickly through the different stages of um, of how to creating of how to create uh, the different API apps, and um, I'm also in the in the in the preparation of uh, creating a blog post that um, gives you more detailed information on how to expose uh, SAP functionality through Logic Apps. So first of all, um, there's the HTTP listener. Um, and this is fairly simple to create. If you go to the marketplace and search for HTTP listener, so we search it here. And you see the the app is immediately available. If you create, you can immediately start um, configuring those HTTP listener um, for your for your use. Um, maybe one important thing: if you want to create a request reply HTTP listener, it's important you drill down to package settings and put the send response automatically to false. That way you say to the API app, okay, I will send back the response. Um, don't worry about it, I will uh, take care of it. If you uh, leave it to true, the HTTP listener will immediately send back uh, an okay message um, once it's uh, being received and not at the end of your uh, logic apps. So I will um, cancel this. So the next thing you can create is the SAP connector. So if we click the SAP connector, it's basically the, the same um, functionality as the HTTP listener. We click create. 
and then you can start um, configuring your your settings um, for the SAP. It's important that you uh, specify your package settings, and those package settings are basically the server name of your SAP, the username where you used to log, log into to the SAP environment, your password, and then some uh, uh, system number, and then you need to provide a, a service bus uh, connection string. This is uh, the service bus connection string is then used to um, to install the the relay service uh, onto your system, like. Um, you saw when I debugged my uh, logic app uh, issue. So I can show you it. So this is the API app I created for, uh, for SAP. So and once you're um, connected, uh, you will see uh, that the hybrid connectivity is up and running. If you did not install uh, this, um, you will see that hybrid connectivity is not connected and you have to install it first so it's um, everything is quite straightforward when um, when doing this the only thing is of course you you have some connection problems now and then so and the next thing I used um, was the was the the mapper so and also this, I will go back to the to the marketplace and search it to the marketplace to. I don't know how it's called. A transform. So you can create a BizTalk transform service. So and here again, you can create it. Um, specify certain values you want. Uh, and so on. And once you've created those uh, BizTalk transform service, you can, uh, if I go back to home, you can um, upload uh, certain maps uh, to that uh, to that API app. So here it shows uh, uh, the map, and here you see I already uploaded one um, uh, map to that API. So if we click Add, you will see you can browse for a file and you can see here it searches for uh, um, the uh, RFM files. So um, that is the, the, the format of the desktop services uh, mapping. So um, let's go back to the slide deck. So that was it on um, app, uh, Azure App Services. So um, to, round, to round the stock up, um, I had a lot of people asking for, uh, yeah, how do I get my own SAP environment? Where did you get those, uh, those SAP environment to play with? Um, well, it's fairly easy. Not so. <laughs> you have to go to the um, to the SAP website, download the trial, so and then register yourself for um, a three months uh, license. Um, you can renew that license every three months, so that's not uh, an issue. But you cannot, you must not forget it. Otherwise, you're of course uh, locked out of the system. So. Um, be aware that the installation time takes uh, long. So I think uh, installation and configuration of my um, environment took me around 20 hours. So that's quite some time. Um, there's a detailed blog post available on uh, the coded blog. I think there's around seven or eight blogs, uh, blog posts about it on how to install and configure your um, your SAP environment. So I will, um, this rounds up my talk, so I will check the live chat to see if there's any questions. 
So no questions. So everything is quite clear. I think in the control panel. I don't know if there's any questions. I, can I see it here? No, so I don't see any questions. So Saravana, if there is our questions, just give me a shout that I can answer them. Um, if not, I want to to thank you everyone for joining me on this hot summer night. Uh, you can find my details uh, on this slide deck. Just um, just give me a ping if you have questions or uh, or you need help in any way. Thank you.